Hello. <laughs> we're really hey, excited. To, yeah, we're really excited to be here. I know. <laughs> that was quite the excited face. <laughs> yeah. Thank you all for um, tuning in with us here. We're really excited to um, to go through our uh, winter intention setting guide. Yeah, this is this is our how to create an at home retreat with our seasonal intention setting how to guidebook. That's a mouthful, um, it but it's what it is. And and in this, if if you've seen the guidebook before, or you've heard us talk about these things. the The guidebook is focused on the solstice. We are the type of people that like to create experiences for ourselves and for other people around the changing of the seasons, right? The, the solstices, the equinoxes and equinoxes. That's, that's funny. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure if that's how you say that or not, but it came out funny, but we, um, uh, like but cacti? it is like, yeah, it's definitely <laughs> like cacti. Yeah. But we, but we focus on only for the summer solstice, the cac cacti mm, don't, they don't do well true. in winter, but, um, we focus on the solstice here, uh, uh, but this is a this is a guide that you could really use the framework uh, for any time of year or any time that you want to do this. Uh, seasons don't necessarily have to fall by the uh, the changing of the weather. Um, you know, there's seasons in your life, there's seasons in your career. There's all kinds of way to look at seasonality, and when you're you know when you're in that moment of change that you need to do something to ground yourself. And that's what this is. This is a guide to help do that. So we're just really glad that you're here tuning in with us. And hopefully if you're here, you've also like downloaded one of these guides or you're going to download one of our guides. We have two guides and we can talk about this uh, here before we get started. We'll be going over our more uh, robust guide that's, uh, uh, I believe it's 20, 20 pages like of, of content, but we also have a free guide that's a lot smaller, that's just two pages. And it's really just an itinerary for you if you're someone who wants to create their own or just needs a little bit of framework. Um, that's once, the one for you. Yeah, and once you listen to this too, you'd be able to use that that two-page document to create something on your own. Mm -hmm. um, I think you'd have enough to work with. And um, yeah, and then the, uh, the full guide is also available. Um, it's $22 um, on our site, or it's free for all the elemental community members, and that's free to join. So we'd be grateful to have you in there if you're not already. Yeah, yeah. So our intention tonight is to gather to provide resources and guidance for everyone to complete their own at-home retreat for self-reflection. So that's what we're going to do. And we're going to share a little bit of uh, what we've done in the past as well. We've got a few um, photos to share and stories about how we've done this. In fact, the first time we did it, um, we we took a few photos of it. So we'll share those with you and just give you a little bit more insight in how to do this and walk, walk with you along the way. Yeah. 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 And um, if as you're going through this, if you have any questions or thoughts, feel free to send us a message. We'd love to hear about maybe what you're thinking. If you have some ideas about how you want to structure your at-home retreat, or um, even wanted to modify some of the, some of the activities, which we highly encourage you and invite you to do. Um, if you want to, you know, like send us some ideas and bounce them back and forth, we'd, we'd be happy to, to do that with you. So let us know. Mm -hmm. um, and then Let's see. So I think our introduction question, this is something that we typically do whenever we've got a group here live, but mm -hmm. we also want to do this for people who are listening um, and invite you to do this as well. So we'll share something that um, has brought us joy lately or something uh, describing a time whenever you felt in your element recently. So we'll answer those. And then at home while you're listening, if you could think about that, or if you wanted to grab your journal and you can write your answer down as well. Um, if you are in the community and wanted to share that and and um, post that for everybody to see. That'd be awesome too. So mm -hmm. Matt, when have you mm -hmm. felt in your element lately or what is something that has brought you joy? Boy, something something that's really brought me joy or something that brought me joy actually today was a, a really small thing, but um, I it was a beautiful day. I was uh, walking to uh, our local coffee shop here, Black Lodge Coffee Roasters. It's always a good day whenever you're, you're walking to the coffee shop. And um, when I was there, I was sitting there working and the door opened and I turned and I looked and it and it was a, a gentleman who um, who is actually has lived in this in the area that we're from here for a long, long time and has been a regular at the coffee shop and comes in all the time. I've had a few conversations with him um, in the past and I he was leaving leaving town and uh, I thought that he was actually already gone. And when he walked in, it almost kind of felt like uh, it felt like a. Um, 
like an aberration or something. Like it was like one of those things. Um, I've had some really great conversations with him and he's someone that I don't know well, um, but the times that we've talked, they've been really important. And I had really realized there in that moment that I had never actually had the chance to say goodbye to him. And so uh, when he walked by, I was able to say hi to him and uh, just wish him well and say goodbye to him. And it just felt, I just felt a lot of joy from that. Just, mm -hmm. just, just seeing him. I don't think he was expecting it. And, you know, and so it was, it was really cool. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Um, for me, um, I'd say today was a, a, a tough day for me. So I had, um, I, I felt like I was, someone said it earlier, like surviving, not thriving. And that's kind of how it felt. And then um, I took some time for myself this afternoon and just went and sat with my thoughts and had some silence, went on a walk. Um, and so uh, I actually I ran into a friend at the Roofless Church and um, and I hadn't shared this with you yet. So no, this is news to me. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he asked how I was doing and I was like, you know, I'm feeling pretty down. And he just said, do you need a hug? And I was like, yeah. And so I got, someone gave me a hug, you know, it was just this, like, I don't know, really simple, thoughtful, mm -hmm. um, universal gesture. Right. And I, I always, I've talked to Matt, he knows about this, like how I, I think it is like one of the absolute coolest things in the whole world. Whenever you run into somebody somewhere, you know, like all the things that have to happen for you to like be on the same street corner as someone or run into them at the same coffee shop or, um, maybe new harmony, not so much mm. <laughs> things have <laughs> it's a, it's a way of happening every day, but yeah. I don't know. There's just something like really cool about it. And so like for that moment to happen, um, and then I had a twofer because on the way home, <laughs> we've had this new ice cream shop in town and the sandwich board outside was, was there and it said open and I went in. Yeah. And so I, I've got some treats for after we, uh, record this call and that brings me immense joy. Yeah. So, Yeah. So I also have immense joy um, for later learning what it's like to eat cherry ice cream mixed with peppermint ice cream. I got mad at so um, God, I'm about to go on a flavor adventure later. So <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe in the future I'll fill everybody in. <laughs> but I love I love it. I love it. Yeah. All right. Okay. So yeah. Let's. Here's maybe. the opportunity. We're gonna move on in just a moment. But if you need to pause, pause the recording. Write down something that's brought you joy lately. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be today. It could be you know five weeks ago or whatever. Just something that comes to mind. Write it down. Um, this is a way to practice gratitude and just be present to some of the joy in our life. Mm -hmm. So, um, and in this, this practice, if I could say of, of, of talking about what brings you joy lately, it's just really, it's, it, it, sometimes it can seem trivial or sometimes it can seem hard or even maybe a little vulnerable to talk about what brings you joy. But when you embody that spirit of joy and you put yourself in that experience, it just gets you vibrating on a higher level and gets you prepared for the work that you're going to do and in the right mindset. So it's really, it really is a a powerful practice and a really simple one. So yeah. Yeah. All right. So should we share screen? Let's share screen. Okay. Let's go through this guide. All right. Normally this is the time where we ask everyone if they can see the screen. <laughs> <laughs> but right now we're just recording so we're gonna trust the, gonna trust the universe yeah mm -hmm. yeah okay so um just to get started this is the cover of our winter winter solstice we, we call it the winter solstice self-guided solstice inquiry however we do want to encourage you to utilize this as a framework anytime throughout the year um just a little note about us um we take um we take the experience of these guides really seriously and we put a lot of effort into the design and, and crafting the language that goes through it and so we hope you really enjoy kind of an immersive experience. We also like to share um, about ourselves a little bit. And uh, on each page, you'll see a little a little note at the bottom of, of, of a, uh, this one says Henderson, Kentucky, because the photo in the background, these are photos that we've taken in our journeys and um, places that really kind of embody that winter spirit. And, and, and uh, this photograph in the background is from Audubon State Park in Henderson, Kentucky. And it's a very special place for, for us. And it's a really remarkable place in winter so this was taken at one of um this could have very well easily been taken during our our actual solstice retreat uh that we did for ourselves that we'll share a little bit i'm not sure exactly when but it could be i think it was a different day yeah it probably was a different mm -hmm. day but still yeah it's it's a, it's a powerful place for us so um 
this is the cover and then we'll we'll move into our welcome so the winter solstice is the official start of winter and the shortest day of the year each solstice and equinox mark an official and energetic transition and a time for us to reflect on what is working and what is not we take an intentional pause and reset through self-inquiry before starting a new season and we want to share that with you so that's our intention that's our welcome into this book and you can see if you remove the winter part and the equinox in this this is Anytime it's a mark of an energetic transition uh, is a time to reflect, right? It's a time to reflect on what you're feeling, what's working, what's not. So you can take the winter out of this and really just use this as a time to reflect in a way to structure structure that day for you, right? So, and why we're here, we always like to talk about why we're here. We've talked a lot about why we are gathering tonight, but this the the why we're here in this guide is about us and elemental and you and the place that you're at in your life. So elemental works to uncover your true and elemental nature, the elements that make you, you. So this core elemental nature evolves over time and responds to the world differently in each season. This can include anything from the foods you eat to the exercises you do and the type of work you engage in. So we'll revisit some of that as we go through the guide. In the winter, we find that we seek out more rest, while in the summer, we tend to be more active in initiative taking. All still fall within our elemental nature. It simply flows differently in each season. So that's something that that we want to, um, that just because you change and flow doesn't mean you change who you are or anything like that. It's just It's just how you react to things and how you go through your life in each different season. So when we take the time to intentionally check in with how we feel within each season, it creates space for us to be compassionate with ourselves instead of feeling like we should be doing this or should be doing that. And it gives us permission to change course instead of doing the same things that aren't serving us. So likewise, it gives us permission to continue the doing things that are serving us and those things that are, are important to celebrate. So this is about getting quiet. This is about taking space and time just to analyze and think about and feel what's working and what's not working. And then we can talk about, you know, what we do about that. Mm. Right. So. All right. So again, I know Matt had just mentioned, um, and we talked a little bit about before how even though the solstice or equinox, they fall on specific dates each year, you can do this anytime. But we do still invite you to, incorporate the season, like whatever is happening into your work. So even if you're doing this, um, maybe in February or you're, you end up deciding to do this in March, like just paying attention to what's happening around you. Um, and you'll see here in a moment, like even the sunrise and the sunset are just important to just be mindful of. Um, so this inquiry and this, these intentions that we're setting, it's all centered around our intentionality of being, finding joy in the daily disciplines that we're doing each day, creating daily rituals and engaging with natural movement. So we've incorporated a lot of those things into this guide. Um, some of it you might be already doing, but some of it, or maybe a lot of it is new. And so this is an opportunity to kind of see what feels good to you and make it yours. Because if you have something that you're doing already that really works, then you can incorporate that here. Um, and so we really invite you to do that. So this particular guide and what we've done before is we've used yoga and meditation, um, preparing and eating food and journaling and reflection. Um, and you'll also see that we have other activities for different kinds of movement involved as well. Um, and that's where you can really get creative with what you're doing. Um, and then what you need will depend on the types of activities you're doing. But if you're following this guide, uh, the way that it's set, then you'll need a yoga mat, journal, um, something to write with, and then all of your ingredients for food prep. And so here's a sample itinerary. Um, we have this broken down into a prep day um, and then one full day, right? So a morning, afternoon, and evening session. You can take this and break it down however you want to. What has worked for us really well is to have maybe one to two days wherever we're, we're dedicating time for this. So usually on the prep day, it's like by 3 p.m., 3 p.m. and on, and then the whole following day. We've blocked out, so we're not doing, um, we're taking off work, we don't have any meetings, we're not doing any coffee dates, those are, it's like, you're out of town, this is your time. Um, if that's that type of um, time commitment is not accessible to you, then maybe figuring out, to, 
figuring out a way to use this so that it is. So maybe taking the prep day and doing that once and doing what you need. And then maybe you're just doing a morning session or maybe you're just doing an afternoon session, but you're doing each part of it just on different days. So just finding a way to really make this work for you. Um, if you have the means and are able to even maybe like actually go somewhere out of town, like rent a space mm -hmm. to go stay in, highly recommend doing that as well. One, just to complete this, but two, just energetically, it's nice to just kind of reset in a neutral space. And that's something that we've also found really helpful. We haven't been able to do that all the time because it's mm -hmm. not always feasible to be able to, to pay for a place to stay and travel, especially um, in December. But if you can make it work and you want to, then we it's a really great way to even just add some, add some joy, extra joy into the process. So from here, we're going to go through what the prep day, morning, afternoon, evening sessions look like and kind of talk through what we've done and then talk about ways to modify mm -hmm. for what fits for you. Yeah, so we always get started with the pre-inquiry. So it's just thinking about how you want to do this. And we recommend, you know, we have a space in here to write down the date and to take note of the sunrise and the sunset. Um, and when that happens in, in, in your part of the world or your part of the country or wherever you are, to take note of those things and you can adjust accordingly because there is something about, you know, being being with the sunrise and feeling the seasonality of the day. Um, in the afternoon or evening prior to your self-guided inquiry, take one or two hours to review your material for the day. Make sure you have all the supplies you need, including food ingredients, and start with a journaling exercise. We recommend preparing within the space. You'll spend your time the following day, light a candle or incense, turn on background music, prepare your favorite beverage, and get started. So these are all, we're, we're creating a ritual space here, right? And I know that that sounds, that can sound very grandiose to create a ritual space, but that's that's the level that we want to bring this to. We want to bring a level of depth and a level of of um, groundedness to this. And so we like to talk about these as ritual spaces. So there's a preparation of getting these things ready. So there's items to gather. You can print or download this PDF for easy access. Like that's what we did. We, even though we created it, we carried it with us throughout the day and marked on it and marked things off. So that that's important to know. And then um, get a journal, something to write with. Um, select a recipe for your self-guided inquiry, purchase and set out the ingredients for your, for your recipe, decide on your afternoon session activity. Uh, it can be hiking, another yoga practice, however you want to do that, and set your start times for the morning, afternoon, and evening session so that you have some accountability and you kind of know I'm going to start at this time and I'm going to do these things. Even for us, that's super helpful for us to kind of like check in with each other and especially because we're doing this together. Um, if you're doing it on your own, it's still nice to have those time frames because you can really just kind of like follow your time frame, right? Yeah. And I think this is also an important time to say because we we haven't yet, but um, you can do this individually or yeah. with a partner or friend. Um, I We've done these both ways, but usually yeah. still like together, but apart, mm -hmm. I guess, um, mm -hmm. and both are powerful. So, um, and especially maybe if you're making a trip out of it, it could be nice to have a friend with you, mm -hmm. um, to, to go through this. And there's just an accountability and just like element of, of fun. And, yeah. and, um, I think that comes with doing this with somebody, um, but there's also great, um, benefits and, mm -hmm. and, um, power, power in doing this, um, on your own. Too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Awesome. So here's a few photos of our first uh, uh, winter solstice retreat that we did for ourselves. Uh, and uh, we created a little altar. So we, we uh, at the time, we were staying in a really small uh, space, uh, sharing a, an apartment in a, in a very small bedroom. And, and this is to kind of even show that you can create something really special in uh, a potentially like small and, and difficult situation. So we created a little space for ourselves on the floor and we created a little altar and we, uh, the stones that you see um, in the little wooden hands are uh, each relate to a chakra, uh, to one of the, one of the chakras. And then we completed, uh, we got those together because we completed a, a chakra um, scan uh, for, for each other when we did this. And you can see we've got a candle and a candle lighter. And then below the 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 apples there, that that is um, preparation that we did beforehand um, for uh, a wassail, which is like a fall uh, spiced cider. And we wanted to 
we thought it would elevate the experience to make everything ourselves. So we actually made our own cider uh, first and then uh, and then use that to make our wassail. So there was a lot of prep work that we needed to do. So we did that early uh, before we started everything to get that rolling, literally rolling, rolling to a boil. Yeah. Now, do you want to add anything to this? Yeah, I was just going to say like the, um, you know, this was the wassail was obviously, obviously for a, a beverage that we wanted to have mm -hmm. on the day of our, our retreat, but you could do anything. But the important thing is, is just to make sure that you have everything prepped um, that you need for the actual day of your retreat, because that's going to help everything flow a lot more smoothly. Mm -hmm. um, and, and also like the preparation the day before, like that's part of the retreat and the experience yeah. too. Like there's, um, I think for, for me, it's, that's a way to find a joy in a daily discipline, right? Like preparing food for ourselves. It's something that we do every day we're eating. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's often a, discipline that we're overlooking is something that can bring us joy. Mm. So that's also the intention here, like make something that you love as mm -hmm. well, yeah. something that's going to nourish you and something that's going to feel good and something that you just like really enjoy eating mm -hmm. or drinking. Yeah. Anything that can elevate the experience and yeah. deepen the experience and feel, you know, like to, to make it feel deeper and more transformational. Yeah. 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 So from here, we go into our morning journal prompt. So uh, one of the first questions, that's a foundational question of why did you decide to complete a self-guided inquiry? This is really important because you, you can write about, you know, like the, 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 the seasonality of the feeling you can write, you can write about things that are changing for you. There's all kinds of things that you can write about, but there's a reason why you decided to do this. And sometimes it's really beneficial to actually write that down and actually see and hear yourself saying it right. Like, like with your own, with your own hand. And then what intentions will you begin your work with? So setting, setting up your intentions, talking about um, what you intend to do and how you intend to be in this work. And then what outcomes do you wish to see as a result of your work? That's really important to think about like what kind of outcomes that you expect so that as you move through the day you can really have this focus and this intentionality on like where you're at and where you want to go right how you want to change with the seasons mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah and from from here when we can create a mantra right mantras are so important um, we, we do a lot of mantra creation. So you knew practicing your mantra, encouraging notes to yourself on the lines before decide on one that empowers you the most and write it bigger in the box at the bottom of this page, read your mantra five times. First thing each morning and throughout the day as needed. So this is a space we've got lines provided because sometimes, you know, you could, you're, you're not really sure what you want your mantra to be. And you can write some things down and you can, you can play around with different wording and the way just getting it just right to where it feels right for you to strike that tone that you need to encourage yourself and to remind yourself of who you are and what you're doing and why you're here. And then to just carry that through as a refrain throughout the day to kind of embed it into, into your subconscious and really kind of you know, step forward and step into it. So this is a space for you to write that down and put it in the box and then carry it with you, you know, throughout the day. Yeah. And the, the question on the previous page, and then this is still in the pre inquiry section. Mm -hmm. So this is what you're doing the day before. Oh yeah. Right. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And now we're to the morning. Yeah. And so this is the morning session. And so on your prep day, you would have designated your start time. So whatever time that you wanted to, to begin this, we recommend having at least two to three hours for your morning session. And so we recommend doing a wake up yoga. And so what we've done is we'll mm -hmm. do um, a 21 sun salutation practice to greet the sun. Um, that's just very ceremonial and um it's, it's a, it's a ritual for us. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's just a, it's a really sun salutation for me is a really great way to connect body, uh, movement, breath, and just really ground in, in your body. And so that's really important to start the day and just to, you know, go through this whole process. Um, if you want to modify your yoga practice, if you have something that you usually do, um, you're a more experienced practitioner, do what feels good to you. Um, if you're new to yoga and you wanted to maybe um, modify it to make it fit what you need, maybe it's just doing five sun salutations. Like mm -hmm. that's perfectly, that's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. um, in the community portal, whenever you download the full guide, we actually have uh, 
14 minute uh, yoga video that you can use. And it's us moving through the sun salutations. And so you can do that with us. And I think that, I think that one is five, five sun salutations. Mm -hmm. um, we also, in this guide here, you'll see that we have um, different, a couple of our curated playlists. So listening to music while you do yoga is a very personal decision. I usually love to listen to music, um, especially playlists that I've created because they, I know like what I like and the music is, um, is pleasing and calming to me. So feel free to use these if that would be helpful or find something else that you like. There's tons of different options on Spotify or YouTube. Um, and then the next thing, yes, a beverage, your morning mm -hmm. beverage. So having something that you really enjoy for me, my go-to is decaf coffee these days. Um, you could do hot tea, lemon water. If there's just something that you really enjoy, maybe it's not something you have every day. So like maybe it's a hot cocoa that you want on this particular day, just making something after you finished your yoga session. And also making note that we have not, um, the only meal that we've included in the itinerary specifically is dinner for this. So you'll just want to make sure to uh, account for whatever time you wanted to have breakfast. If you're eating breakfast, or if you want to fast, you can fast. Mm -hmm. Um, we've done that before as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's what this morning session is, is like. So we're having our wake up yoga. You're eating if you want to having that morning beverage and then going into our journal journal prompts. Um, and then we also have this sun salutation, a guide here for you to go through. If you, if you don't have the video or don't want to use the video, um, and it has the, um, the different poses with breath cues, but it's really important to listen to what your body and your breath are doing. So even though I have an inhale mountain pose cue, if you feel good exhaling and that feels natural to you, then by all means do that. Um, this is what feels most natural to, um, to, to me, to my body and, and what I was taught whenever I was learning sun salutation. And so I've gotten the rhythm with that. And so I invite you to try it, but again, ever feels good to you is what you, um, what you should do. And so these are photos from our first year. We actually, um, we did our 21 sun salutations at a local state park outside, um, with the sunrise. So we hiked in while it was still dark. Um, I think it was like a half mile hike, um, but it was still a little scary and it was 21 degrees outside. Yeah. You can see the frozen <laughs> lake in the background. And then we found a little rock uh, on a little concrete pad so we could mark off and keep track of our 21. Yeah, it was, um, it was cold. It was really invigorating. And yeah. so we invite you to like actually get outside if you want to, mm -hmm. um, challenge yourself. And, uh, this, I think we were out there for, I don't know, probably 45 minutes or an hour. And it, it was, it was cold, but it was like, it was a really unique experience, Yeah, but yeah. you don't have to do that. You can do it. Getting yourself outside of your comfort zone sometimes is, is a really good way to like really quiet the mind as well. You know what I mean? And, and give yourself some confidence to do something that you normally wouldn't do. So, but also that you can combine that with very much like being cozy and warm, you know, and warm too. So we just invite you to try different things and see what kind of like gets you into the right mindset. Yeah. These things, this really worked well for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was, I think two years ago. And then this last mm -hmm. year we were indoors and that yeah. felt really good. So mm -hmm. yeah, it just depends. And so your, your journal, journal prompts here, reflecting on the last three months, what is something you've been doing that does not bring you joy? How can you change this? What is something that has brought you joy and how can you continue this? There are no right or wrong, too big or too small answers. Whatever comes to you is simply what it is. So no expectations on how long your answers are, what you say, how you say it. This is simply what comes out and this is what you need to help you reflect on what you've been doing and reset for what you want to do moving forward. Mm -hmm. And so here, what is something in your life that you wish to begin? What have you been thinking about or dreaming about? Um, we encourage you to be um, expansive here. Um, you know, if there's something you've been dreaming about that you want to start doing, just write it down. You know, if there's objections that come to your mind, like maybe you don't have the time or you don't have the money to start this, or maybe you need equipment, or maybe you don't have anybody to do this particular activity with, and you really want to do that with somebody, like just write it down. This is a space for you to just let yourself dream, let yourself write down mm -hmm. anything that your heart is saying, like, I want to do this because maybe it doesn't make sense this season, but when you come back to this in a few months and look at it and say, Oh, I said, I wanted to play the guitar. I want to start to learn how to play the guitar. And I just met somebody the other day that said they had one that they wanted to sell. and I could actually afford it. And Oh, I have the time now. So it's like, 
you know, you're just kind of putting these things out for the the world, for the universe to kind of pick up on, mm. to deliver back to you whenever, whenever the time is right. Mm. Or maybe it's something you're just writing down, but whatever it is, like no limits here. Mm. And then here, what tools, resources, and support do you need to begin what you wish? So this is where you can start to think about what you might need support with to start some of these things. And you might realize like, yeah, now's not the right time. Or you might start to realize like, oh, if I just ask for help from, from so-and-so, then this is a little more doable, right? Um, and if here too, like if there's something that comes to mind, if you need to brainstorm and wanted to talk through some different ways to get the support that you need, send us a message and we'll talk through different ideas with you to, to help you figure out how to start doing the thing that you want to do. Um, we could even maybe connect you with like different people who are doing something similar. And because I know community is really important. If you're already in the elemental community, maybe get in there and the introductions topic and you can kind of tell people what you've got going on, ask for help. Um, that's what that space is there for. Yeah, so this brings us into the afternoon. So when we get into the afternoon, we want to reflect on our morning journal and write three specific habits or actions that you will implement to start what you envision. For example, if you said you wanted to start going for a walk once a day to feel more energized, three habits could be waking up 30 minutes earlier each day, setting out walking clothes before bed, drinking a smoothie after each walk for a nutrient boost. So this, this is like part of that reflection on the morning and starting to think about action, right? Through the journal prompts. And um, and here in the afternoon, we're going to reserve two to three hours for your afternoon session is what we're suggesting. This session is about setting intentions, creating a plan of action for the next three months. We start with a reflection and journal prompts and then finish the afternoon with movement to get the blood flowing and re-energize. So we just, we went over the reflection and then the journal prompt of what parts of your day do you hold sacred? For example, time to read in the morning, drinking coffee or tea, a specific workout routine in the evenings, cooking with your family. Reflect on your morning journal prompt of what has brought you joy in the last three months and list as few or many things as you want. So think about the time of day so that you feel more motivated or you feel more creative or you feel more connected or you, you know, and what do you like to do during those times of day? And then think about what's brought you joy in the last three months. And this will help kind of bring all of that together so then is movement so this is an important thing you know for like we got in some movement with, with in the morning session and then now in the afternoon we want to do we want to do more movement so um you find a local place to go on a silent hike do yoga outdoors go for a walk or run do any kind of movement that feels good to you that's outside even if it's raining notice how it makes you feel and take notes below or in your journal it's actually to the side, but either way, yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, the, the, this is a space and you can see in this photo is a picture I, of me running, uh, running at Audubon. So that's, that's the movement that works well for me. If you just want to go for a, a short walk, or if you want to do another yoga practices, I think as Alyssa said earlier, that this is the time just to get in a little bit more movement and allow it to be the movement to help you process what you're writing and what you're feeling movement is a powerful way of sort of encoding things into and refreshing and resetting the brain and um uh you know energizing yourself into like sort of what 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 you've been thinking about and what you've been writing about and what you're planning yeah and even if doing something like if there's a yoga class that you wanted to go to mm -hmm. in the afternoon like planning ahead for that but just being mindful that if you're going to a class not to you know um just to reserve your your time and your energy for your inner self-reflection and not um, like not getting distracted if there's like people or if you get invited to do something afterwards mm -hmm. or something like that. So mm -hmm. just being mindful of like keeping to your, your plan. Mm -hmm. And we do, we do kind of strongly suggest getting outside and we do, if you're able and, and, and you're capable of doing it, even if, if it might be uncomfortable for you, just feeling winter you know what I mean like feeling especially if it's this time of year or whatever season it is for you kind of like taking it in even if you are like going to a yoga practice or you're going to the gym you know or or going to a pool to swim take a minute when you're outside just to breathe the air and feel and look around and look at the look at the plants and look at the things that you see around you just to kind of like really kind of ground yourself in the, in the season that you're in. Uh, for us here, it was winter and we chose as our, um, 
uh, movement was to do a, a weighted silent hike. So what that means is that we put on weight vests and we went for a hike um, with weight vests on in silence. So we went together, but we didn't speak. And we, we, there's, there is a certain, there is a powerful, um, it is a powerful thing to be with another person or with other people and be in silence. Right. And there's just something really special about that. And so for this, this allowed us to be in silence. This allowed us to, as you can see the photo on the left with Leslie in her weight vest, uh, and the sun coming through the trees. And it really gave us this opportunity to really appreciate the light and the way that the the leaves from the trees and just to really kind of like experience the the cold and, and winter. And then there's a photo of us with the leaves that still are, remind us of fall and the long shadows and just experiencing that light and that beauty. And then even just a couple of, we stopped to take a few photos of like the the uh the frozen ground you know and the different textures and the seasonality of where we are it's just like taking all that in and grounding yourself in the space that you're in in the climate that you're in and the season that you're in uh is all a very a way to elevate the experience and heighten the experience and feel the transitions as they're happening yeah so evening time and again you'll have your start time kind of planned out here and in the um, the itinerary that we have at the beginning, we have recommended times, but edit those to fit what you need. Mm -hmm. So this again is another two to three hour session. Um, this is to rest, enjoy, and reflect on what you've done and then what you've got coming up. So everything um, that we recommend is with the intention to pay attention to these daily disciplines and these things that you're incorporating into your life. So we do have access to this joy in our, our daily life anytime. Um, and we recommend like noticing the smells that you um, that you smell and the sounds that you hear and just paying attention to the food as you're preparing it and how it tastes while you're eating it. Um, so we have some tips here for how to make your meal more enjoyable, um, lighting candles, playing background music, um, using serveware that brings you joy and that maybe you're hand washing. So instead of putting things like right in the dishwasher, actually taking the time to wash them by hand. Um, and that's a specific exercise for this evening. So even if that sounds uncomfortable, maybe give it a try and just like, I don't know, just like have an appreciation for the meal you've had and the dishes that you're doing. Right. Um, it's really a gratitude practice yeah. too for having those things mm -hmm. and for just being grateful for it. Yeah. It's, it's another vibrational thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you know, if you're listening to this and you haven't, um, like planned out what you're going to do for your, um, for your at home retreat yet, like maybe go, if you, if you want to go buy like a plate or a bowl or something that you just like really love that you're like, Oh, I love this thing. And I can't wait to eat food off of it. Mm -hmm. Like do that thing. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, yeah. And have fresh flowers on the, on the table, flowers that you love, um, something that's seasonal. Um, and for me this time of, of year, December, I like to have twinkly lights. Mm -hmm. So lots of twinkly lights, candles, music, I'm set. Um, we also recommend, uh, meditating in the evening. So concluding your evening with a meditation to reset and center for the new season. Um, we suggest 15 to 30 minutes and we have a few different links. So anything from Joe Dispenza, Gabby Bernstein has some different options. And then, um, Matt's been doing some of the breath work sessions with, um, with Sandy here on YouTube. So mm -hmm. those are some different options as well. Um, thank you, Matt. Yeah. And so this is the, the wassail that we made, um, from the apple cider that we'd prepped the day before. And then, um, we actually made a soup, some Parmesan crisps, and, um, we had Ezekiel English muffins. So, um, we prepared everything in silence as well. Um, you don't have to do that, but I recommend it. It's actually, especially if you're doing this with another person that like Matt was talking about how, like the activity, like moving in silence is different. Like, so is the food preparation. And it was actually a lot easier than you might think um, <laughs> because you don't, I, I don't know, you're just kind of like flowing with it. Right. And you've done the prep. It's like, you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. It's, you don't have to make decisions about like, Oh, what are we going to make? And what, you know, what ingredients do I need? Like you already have that figured out. Um, so that kind of takes away that element. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just making something that's nourishing. Um, we went with a soup. I, I love warm foods. Mm -hmm. I also love cheese. <laughs> um, 
And so we, you, you know, covered the bases we there. Did, we did. And um, yeah, so that was what we, that was what we had. And then we did our, our meditation after, and then something else that we did for this particular um, evening was we wrote down some of our, um, some things that we wanted to let go of um, in order to be able to like come into this new season and start these new things and kind of be in alignment with who we wanted to be in the next season. And then we, we burned them. Um, and that was a meditation that we actually found online. So I just recommend Googling, um, different meditations or different, um, anything that might resonate with you, mm -hmm. um, as far as, you know, bringing this into fruition. So mm -hmm. we've created this space here, but we really want you to make it your own with what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Um, and of course use the, some of the other links that we provided too. And if you're using fire indoors, just be careful. Be careful. Yeah. And and this is a bowl of water that we put them out in. And then after we did that, we took it outside and poured it on a tree. And and that was like on actually part, yeah, yeah, on the ground as part of like, you know, returning it to the earth and allowing it to 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 pass and and be consumed, you know, by the earth. So that was a really, really special um, yeah. part of it. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of really special parts, so we want to there's always the opportunity when you're really connected and you're really on that vibrational level and you're really um, connecting to yourself, special things can happen. Magic can happen. And um, this is a photo of our centerpiece, our uh, floral <laughs> arrangement, you know, was a, this is a special little, um, little container that we got on our travels. Um, and, uh, it has a bandaid on it because we dropped it the first we were so excited about getting this little succulent and then we dropped it and broke broke it and then put it back together with the band-aids and we carried it around with us everywhere we went and this was a really special little succulent and a really special little plant that we just like always had with us so we it reminds us of ourselves and our travels and our experiences and our transformation and here it has like the new life in the middle of it like you can see the new bloom yeah coming out was cool. yeah. so it was like the new bloom coming out of this like um cobbled together uh yeah base. yeah base. and then while we were in the process of eating dinner we noticed some movement and for a long time prior to this we had noticed that there was a stink bug uh, which you can see down inside the leaves and uh it had been there forever and we just assumed that it was dead and we didn't have the heart to like move it or do anything to it. So we just let it be. Cause it was just like resting so nicely on the leaves and it was just tucked in and it yeah. looked like it had a cozy life and it had just <laughs> ended it its life. Like, this is yeah. part of our centerpiece now. Yeah. And we talked about it and, and, and all of that. And then while we were in the middle of, of our dinner and we were feeling, you know, feeling the season and feeling it, the stink bug literally resurrected it came out of the inside it crawled out of the inside of this thing and then crawled right up on top of that new uh shoot and just stood up on its end and we were both just completely in awe of this and just couldn't believe it and it was just such a magical a beautiful way to sort of end you know the, the the dinner and uh and this little bug and we learned that um the stink bugs do something called torpor and it was in hibernation. And it was one of those things where we would have had any idea. And if we would have like gotten rid of that bug, we would have killed it. And it was actually just sleeping. And it was, and there was a beautiful sort of symmetry to winter time and taking it slow and hibernating and resetting and reflecting. And this, this little stink bug just came right out of its torpor and just did a little sun salutation and celebrated <laughs> right for us. So we wanted to, to share that experience with you because beautiful, magical things happen whenever you're take the time and take the intention and set yourself on, on a course of grounding and connecting to yourself. And this was just one of those beautiful moments. Yeah. yeah. We'll never forget it. Yeah. Yeah. And it, on that note, if you're, if you're listening to this one, thank you for sharing that story with us. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you've had something similar happen to you, we would love to hear about it. Um, I know, you know, things like this happen all the time, especially when you least expect it. And there's, there is magic in it mm -hmm. and joy. And so if something comes to your mind that you're thinking of like, oh my gosh, like I have this very similar experience, please share that with us or share it with somebody, mm -hmm. um, share it with somebody. 
So yes. often we have these incredible experiences that we don't feel like people will understand or they don't, you don't think that people will take it seriously or you might get laughed at or not taken seriously. And we're, we have these, these experiences all the time. And this is a, this is a space, this is your community, right? This is your place to share these, the wonder and the awe and the joy in life. Yeah. We, we, yeah. we love it. Yeah. And that brings us to the end of our guide. So I'm going to stop sharing here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thank you for, for going through the guide with us. Mm -hmm. We're really excited for you to complete an at-home retreat for yourself, no matter what season or day or year, part of the year it is. Um, yeah. Let us know. Let us know how it goes. Let us know if you have questions. Um, this is again, the, the template that we created based on something that we've done for ourselves, mm -hmm. something that has brought us a lot of clarity. Um, you know, when we originally started doing this, you know, that question, like, why are you doing this self-guided inquiry? Mm -hmm. Like, I remember for me, it was like, because I don't know what I'm doing with my life right now. You know, like I need some kind of direction. And so this was, you know, created out of necessity, I think too, but it was just, this was a starting point. It was a starting point to doing something different in my life, to start doing something that was going to serve me. Um, and, and it did, and it was so beneficial that we actually like, that was the start of us doing this every season. So on the spring equinox, on the summer solstice on the fall equinox, we actually will go back and look at our journaling and review it and then just do the same thing again. Mm. So, and depending on our lives, what they look like, we don't always block out like that amount of time, but we'll at least do like a half day each, each mark of the seasons, because each changing of the seasons, we're coming into being like new people, right? Like our bodies need different things. Our activities look different. The weather is different. Our schedules are different. And so um, it's just a good opportunity to, to reflect and reset because mm -hmm. we can always, we can always start over. We can always begin again. We can always intentionally bring some joy into our daily lives. And that's all I have uh, yeah. on that. Yeah. Awesome. So we just, we just invite you uh, at the conclusion of this video to join the elemental community for access to this free solstice guide, uh, monthly self-care calls, reflections that uh, we write on a regular basis and um, that I write. Sense. Yeah. Well, you've got your right. Yeah. Yeah. It's all there. Our, our writing is there. Mine is usually in the reflections and then one vir virtual yoga class each month. And, um, yeah, so this is just one of those things that uh, that the community is something that we we want to grow. We do it for ourselves, is and because we know when we do things for ourselves, we're really doing them for everyone else, and we want to do it in community. And it's important it's important for us to to um, practice these things and grow and transform in supportive community. So we're here for you. Yeah, thank you for yeah. being with us. Thank you. Please reach out, um, thoughts, questions, stories, whatever, joy. We'd love to hear it all. So. Yeah. Sending you love and vision. Thank you for being with us. Talk soon. Good night.